Hi, I'm Phyllis, southernfrugal.com. I have had, uh, over the past several years, a lot of requests uh, from people on how to season a cast iron skillet. Now, I don't really do it like everybody else. I, I just learned many, many years ago, and it always works, so that's the way I do it. So when you first get your cast iron skillet or pot or in, in this case, it's kind of a Dutch oven, it's what I have here. Uh, you want to wash it really good, just and just only use a little bit of soap, like a little bit of dish detergent. Rinse it really good and then dry it thoroughly. And then this is what I do. Now I'm going to use a skillet that I bought several years ago and have hardly ever used, which is this one. It's, uh, it's like a Dutch oven and uh, with the lid, and I, I really uh, ended up getting a, a glass cooktop, and so I kind of really quit using my cast iron uh, skillets and pans. So if you were using this when you were camping, you can actually make biscuits in it by turning the lid upside down, put it, put it on some red coals, and put some coals on top of it. And they make one that's, that's similar to this. It's got a little handle on it that you can do the same way, but you could also do one like this that way. So what I do, and again, this skillet has not been used that much, and I didn't care for it because it's got little, it's almost got a rough little surface where this one does not. Can you all see? Let's see if you can see. It's just kind of a rough surface, and I think they made it that way so it would, stuff would be less likely to, uh, to stick to it. But anyway, what I do, I just use Crisco. Now, uh, I would not use anything with salt in it like bacon grease or, or even lard just because it's got salt in it. Okay, the smallest amount of Crisco. And of course the pan will still be a little warm because you've washed it and rinsed it real well and dried it off in hot water. And I just go ahead and grease the whole thing, lid and everything. Just the very thinnest coat of Crisco. Just grease every part of it. Now I'm going to do the bottom and the back, but I'm only going to put a little bit on because I'm not going to turn this upside down in my oven. I am going to leave it sitting upright. And of course, you also get it you know, really good on the handle too. And I'm also going to put the lid in there. And I've got my oven preheating at 450 degrees. I know, that's a lot hotter than anybody else recommends, but you want to grease uh, this lid too and the inside of it, because this is all 100% cast iron. Just grease it all around. Now, I'm gonna sit my lid in like this. So what I'm gonna do is take a paper towel and wipe out as much of that as I can, and I'm actually gonna wipe the outside of it too. So it's just got the absolute thinnest layer on it. Now on the bottom of the skillet, I'm also going to wipe off a lot of the Crisco I just put on it. So it's just this super thinnest layer on there. I'm going to wipe a little bit out of the inside of it. Now I'm going to leave more on the inside of it than anywhere else. Alright, so we've got it all greased up and I'm going to put it in the oven. And what I'm going to do, the oven is, my oven is at 450 degrees, which is really hot. So I'm going to put it in the oven on the shelf, close the, the oven door, and leave it maybe 20 to 30 minutes. It's going to smoke, which is exactly what I want it to do. So it's going to smoke, and I'm going to cut my oven off and leave it overnight. I'm not going to take it out and let it cool or anything. I'm going to leave it in the oven. Close the door, forget about it go to bed, get up the next morning, it'll be cool, but it'll be seasoned. Now, let, let me go over some ways that you need to treat your cast iron. Hold on, I'll put this in the oven. We'll be right back. All right, we got the uh, cast iron skillet with the little lid in the oven. It's at 450 degrees. I set my timer for 30 minutes, 
and I'm going to go back and hit cancel when it's when the when it, the timer sounds. I'll leave it overnight. So uh, anyway, let's get back to the cast iron skillets now. I want you to look at this. Can you see that? This is a seasoned cast iron skillet. When you wash your cast iron skillets, just use the teeniest bit of uh, dish detergent and hot water. Wash them quickly and then dry them thoroughly. Now, you definitely don't want to ever put away a cast iron skillet with any water at all on it anywhere, not even on the bottom of it. And uh, so what I do I, with my kitchen, y'all probably seen the, the, where I've got my cooktop underneath is where I keep a lot of my pots, my bigger pots. And in the back of it is where I've got little hooks there and that's where I keep my cast iron skillets hanging up. Another way to store a cast iron skillet, if you've got a stove that's got that little under drawer in it, put your cast iron skillets in there so they always stay dry. Um, anyway, so let's get back to how to care for these. You never ever want to put a cast iron skillet in a dishwasher. Don't ever do that. You will have to re-season it again if you do. Also, do not let it soak in the sink with soapy water or even water. Just do not do it. If you get something on your cast iron skillet that won't come off and you're going to have to soak it, get you one of these. This is a, and it's really old, this is a stainless steel little scrubber. It's a, it's kind of like the stuff you use when you're uh, refinishing something and you're, you've stripped it and you want to kind of use some steel wool on it. Well, this is steel wool that you can clean out pots with. And of course, you couldn't use it on uh, um, a non-stick finish at all, but you can certainly use it on stainless steel and you can also use it on cast iron. Now, when you do this, like for instance, one of the things that will stick to cast iron, even if you have enough grease in there, if you're making eggs with uh, the kind of eggs I showed y'all my mother used to make when you put uh, uh, evaporated milk in them, they tend to stick. So what you can do is just put a little soap in there, let it soak for just a minute or two. Then just use this to scrub it out. So rinse it off real good and then just put a little more Crisco on it. Now I do not use oil on mine because oil tends to go away where the Crisco or any type of shortening tends to stay there and again uh, people used to use lard for this really before I guess they invented Crisco many years ago but m most of the time lard has salt in it and uh, that doesn't work so well on your skillet so again and when you're cooking stuff if you're frying stuff, like you're frying pork chops, you're frying chicken, you're frying bacon, sausage, all of that. Now sausage will make a big mess in the bottom. You pour the grease off, maybe use a paper towel to clean the surface off a little bit. Put the, when I say the teeny, I'm talking about maybe one or two drops of dish detergent in the pan. Put a little hot water in there and go ahead and scrub it. You might let it soak maybe one or two minutes, but that's all. Don't leave it sitting in your sink because the result will be rust. Now, a little discussion about the rust. When, when I first started cooking years ago, I thought it was an absolute disaster if my cast iron skillet, I took it out to cook something and it had, maybe, maybe I had two stacked on top of each other like this little one sitting inside and where it would rust was right around the edge where this skillet was touching it. And I would like have to wash it out and dry it out real good and try to get all that uh, uh, rusty color out of it before I cooked anything. Well, here's, here's the way that that doesn't need to happen. That rust is iron and we all need iron. So what they used to recommend particularly to young women of childbearing age, which usually needed iron, uh, is uh, to always cook in cast iron. That way, some of that iron is going to leach out into your food. You won't taste it, but it'll definitely be there. And that will help you help young women uh, of childbearing age to 
to you know have enough iron in their body. Now, of course, we can take iron pills if we need to, if you're anemic or anything. So anyway, that's uh, the way I have done my uh, skillets. Now, I will share with you the way a neighbor of mine, this was years ago, did her skillets, or rather she had her husband to do them. So she had apparently decided to replace her cast iron skillets for what reason I don't know, but she got a, had a great big one, then a medium sized one, and then a little smaller one. And I'm not sure if someone had given them to her or not. But anyway, uh, this neighbor, our, this was in Virginia, our two back doors outside the garage were only about maybe 20 feet apart. And that particular day I had gone to take the garbage out. And her husband was out there and he had some lighter fluid. And I saw that he had some skillets on the ground. I said, well, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm seasoning these skillets for my wife. And I said, how are you going to do that? And he said, I'm going to set them on fire. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, he, he just poured some lighter fluid on them, threw a match in there, and they blazed all up. And yeah, they turned black all right. And uh, that was the way they did it. Now, this particular neighbor was from uh, way in the back country in West Virginia. So I figured they probably knew what they were doing. But anyway, of course, I've never seasoned uh, cast iron that way. But another way would be to uh, grease your skillet and just go put it out. If you've got a gas grill, just go put it out on the gas grill. Let it flame up if it needs to. And uh, the other thing I don't do is, uh, and I noticed that, that people uh, on, I looked up some said that you should put tin foil under your skillet because you're supposed to turn it upside down. I don't do any of that because the place I want it most seasoned is on the inside of the skillet. So I want, you know, that oil to just burn up really. And so anyway, after you get through seasoning it, you can take it out and wash it. You can even wash it, scrub it a little bit with that, just a little bit, and see how it looks. Now the best way to keep your skillet seasoned is to keep using them by frying stuff in them. Now, if you uh, fix something in your skillets acidic, like spaghetti sauce, say you fried out some hamburger, now you, you put some onions and peppers and whatever else in there, cook those, and then you dump in some tomato, you're gonna probably have to do a little re-seasoning of your skillet after you get done, and particularly if it sits in your skillet for a while. So better to just not cook anything acidic in cast iron skillets. That way you don't, you, you won't have any rust because that acidity in the skillet is definitely going to eat off the grease and you'll have a bare skillet and you're going to need to maybe re-season it a little bit. So when you wash them, say you fried bacon. All right, so you dump the bacon grease off wipe it out with a paper towel or some kind of rag you can throw away. Just a little bit of soap so you have actually left, see where I put my finger in there? There's actually a little bit of grease in there still. And that way they'll stay seasoned and you won't see the rust. But if you do, don't worry about the rust. Rust in it, that's iron. Your body can use the iron probably if you're a young woman. All right, so that's it on seasoning cast iron skillets. Uh, I have had these for many, many years. And in fact, this one, probably the longest, but see, can y'all see how it's cracked and all on the bottom? Yeah. And what I do is uh, I've got some, uh, uh, what I used to do, I hang them up now, but what I used to do is put them in my cabinet and I would always put something down because they will definitely make a black mark on your you know, shelf line or whatever you've got in your cabinet for sure. So, and also, of course, you don't want to uh, put them away uh, when they're wet. Just always dry them out and you probably need a paper towel to dry them out because sometimes the black comes off. And uh, one other little thing, we, uh, we used to have uh, in this particular house. Now this house was built in 1908 and we had the original ki uh, kitchen sink that was in here. We renovated this, um, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago and took that sink out, but it was a really thick, super heavy s double sink and it was uh, ceramic. 
and and so you know cast iron with the ceramic and it was white and if you set a, a cast iron skillet down in it you're going to mark up your sink big time and about the only thing that would get it out is that uh, uh, bar stuff and and like comet cleanser some kind of gritty cleanser to get the marks out that it makes in your sink so anyway i can't think of anything else on this uh, I am going to use my uh, cast iron skillet and, and, and go ahead and make a skillet meal for our supper tonight. But I'm going to do it on the induction uh, little plate I got that Mr. Bucky got for me. Uh, it, cast iron definitely works on induction. Let me show you. So I've got just a little induction burner, and I think I've shown this before on a video. You have to, it, whatever kind of pan you use, you have to be able to stick a magnet to it. See there? All my cast iron uh, pans uh, will work on my induction plate. So anyway, all right, so I've got to get on and fix us something to eat. So we will see y'all next time. I hope this helps. Bye for now.